Good evening, folks. It's lovely to be back in person uh, together again. Um, of course, we had uh, we kind of sneaked an in-person service um, on Easter Sunday, which was lovely to, to have Easter Sunday like that. And then we sneaked another one last Sunday as well that was an invite-only one for, uh, for the Duke of Edinburgh. Uh, that, uh, that, that asked, um, folks had asked if we would host uh, that service. So if you haven't seen that one, then please uh, check that out on Facebook and on YouTube, and you'll be able to see the, uh, that service. But, uh, but it's lovely to be back on a Thursday evening um, and to see so many of your uh, lovely faces as well. The, um, the guidance is kind of the same um, as it was, as far as I'm aware. Uh, we uh, need to keep our masks on during, uh, during worship. We're not allowed to sing. Um, Rachel is going to sing uh, for us. Uh, and, uh, um, and at the end of the service, uh, uh, Edith and Sandra will tell you when you, can, uh, when you can leave so that we can make sure that we've got everybody uh, safely distanced um, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, but I think apart from that, that's the only bits of stuff that I need to tell you about. Um, I can't think of any intimations or anything like that that I need to tell you about at the moment um, either. Um, so let's just take a little moment to still our hearts as we approach God in worship. Blessed be God who creates out of nothing, who shapes beauty out of chaos, breathes life into dust, delights in designing difference, and embodies in each human the image of our Maker. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be God who gives each person a purpose, calling the young for their energy the older for their wisdom, refusing to discriminate in terms of race, color, intellect, or giftedness, affirming forgotten worth, identifying hidden potential, redeeming deep regrets. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be God who forsakes heaven to live on earth who in Jesus is truly flesh of our flesh and bone of our bone, vulnerable to pain, rumor, and conflict, open to question, committed to heal, sentenced to death, destined for resurrection, vindicating the power and the love of God, ever holy, ever one. Blessed be God forever. Blessed be the Maker, the Son, and the Spirit in our lives and in our worship. Amen. So let's hear Rachel um, as, um, uh, as we um, join in worshiping together um, hymn number five, O Lord, our Lord, which is a version of Psalm 8. you raise to counter enemy and threat <laughs> 
us pray. You have embodied us. You, our wise creator, have shaped us with bones and coated us with flesh. And in features as in voice, you have made each one unique. You have embodied us. Our body is a home we can never leave. For though our hearts may take us to heaven and our minds lead us to hell, our feet are firmly grounded. You have embodied us. You have embodied us, and more than this, you have made us your body, joining us to flesh and blood, hearts and minds, purposes and passions not our own. You've joined us to the starving poor in India, to the intelligentsia in the Vatican, to Pentecostals in Zimbabwe, and Mennonites in Paraguay, and threatened Christians in the Middle East and respected believers in Cuba, and to the widows and orphans whom Jesus loves, and to the beggars and prostitutes among whom Jesus sits throughout the world. You have embodied us. You are the womb from which all came. You are the life on which all depends. You are the destiny which lies before us. You are the eternal word whom Jesus embodied. So we trust you. So we praise you. Amen. Let's hear the word of God as it's found in Psalm number 71. In you, O God, is my security. Let me never be put to shame. By your saving power, deliver me. Hear me and keep me safe. Be a rock or a refuge for me to which I can always come. Keep me safe from the power of the wicked, from the grasp of the cruel and unjust. In you, as long as I can remember, my hope and my trust have been placed. I've leaned on you since my birth, since you brought me out of the womb. Keep close when energy fails me, and I spend my last years on earth. Let me wait in continual hope and praise you again and again. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, Thanks be to God. And listen again for the word of God as it's found in Psalm 8, which is the psalm that we just sang. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouths of babes and infants, you have founded a bulwark because of your foes to silence the enemy and the avenger. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have established, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? You've made them a little lower than God and crowned them with glory and honor. You've given them dominion over the works of your hands. You've put all things under their feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the seas. O Lord, our sovereign, how majestic is your name in all the earth. For the word of God in Scripture, for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us, thanks be to God. Um, today is Earth Day, which uh, will International Earth Day. So it's a day that we that we think a little bit about eco things um, and uh, and about our world. And um, for our reflection, I'm going to read to you something that I didn't write. Um, it's written by um, 
uh, by a 17-year-old called Christine Mayer, um, who is the daughter of Neil Mayer, who is the minister of Contour uh, Parish Church. Um, and she had this article uh, um, published in Life and Work um, next month in the May edition of Life and Work. So you're getting a sneak preview unless you've had it already um, online. Sometimes folks uh, manage to get it online. Um, and she, uh, the article says that she's explaining why she has taken part in a, in a course that was run by Tear Fund called Emerging Influencers. Um, and I thought that I would uh, read what it is that she's said because I found it pretty powerful, some of the stuff that she uh, was talking about. So she says, as a young Christian who is passionate about social justice, I believe climate change is the biggest injustice of our time. And if we don't act now, the consequences will be catastrophic. A recent survey by Tear Fund and Youthscape found that nine out of 10 Christian teenagers are concerned about climate change. Yet only one in 10 surveyed believe their church is doing enough to respond to the climate crisis. This doesn't surprise me. She said, I first learned about climate change when I was only nine. My teacher was passionate about the issue and we learned to take care of the school vegetable patch visited local apple orchards and had a class toy who would go home with someone each week and report what we did to be more environmentally friendly. I would meet friends regularly to talk about the environment and I realized this is not the case for most generations. However, it demonstrates how important this issue has become. 86% of teenagers surveyed said their faith teaches them to care about injustice and 84% said it's important that Christians respond to climate change. Taking care of the planet is not just a good thing, but something God instructs us to do. She said, I can't help but feel guilty about all the extreme droughts, floods, snowstorms, and forest fires which emphasize our broken world. And it's often the ones who have had the least impact on, climate, on the climate who are affected most severely. She said, it breaks my heart that our brothers and sisters across the world are suffering because of our consumerist way of living. Climate change is not just a trend, a fad that will be forgotten in a couple of years. Climate change is something the church risks losing young people over. My generation has had enough of the brokenness of this world and wants to see and make a change. Young people are calling on their church leaders to listen learn alongside them and act with integrity on this issue. And she says there are several ways the church can act. Firstly, she says encouraging individuals to be conscientious about their care for the environment. Tear Fund's Climate Emergency Toolkit is a practical tool to help churchgoers of all ages respond. Secondly, helping those already affected by climate change by supporting organizations like Tear Fund who help communities thrive despite the changing climate. And thirdly, the church can use its public voice and public profile to lobby governments and large corporations to be more environmentally responsible. Shockingly, 20 companies are responsible for a third of all global greenhouse gas emissions. And the UK is the world's second largest exporter of plastic waste per person. And she says, finally, we need to pray Tear Fund survey found 57% found of young people had prayed about the climate in the last year, and 84% are willing to. We need to thank God for the world he has provided, seek forgiveness for the way it is now, and ask what we can do to fix it. She says that her church in Contour has organized an eco group during Lent for the last two years. And she says that she's been given the opportunity to do a sermon on the climate crisis. And they've been overwhelmingly supportive of a litter pick fundraiser that she helped to raise money for Tear Fund. But she says there is still more that we can do. We're not perfect, but it's a start and hopefully a catalyst for something much larger. And she says this is a crucial year with the upcoming UN climate conference taking place right on our doorstep. Climate change will be on the news and unavoidable over the coming months. 
We as a church can't sit idly by. We must be part of this discussion and part of the, of the solution. And she says, more information on Tear Fund's research burning down the house, how the church could lose young people over climate and action is available on the Tear Fund website. Um, and, uh, and you can look that, um, that up on, um, uh, if you just Google Tear Fund, then you'll be able to find, um, find that uh, article. Let's pray together. Loving God, we thank you for this earth that you've given us, that you've gifted to us. We thank you that you invite us to partner with you in the flourishing of this world. So help us to know what it is that we can do to help secure this world for our next generations. Loving God, as we pray, may your kingdom come on earth. Amen. So let's hear our second hymn this evening, Touch the Earth Lately. Let's pray together. Take our hands, Lord, not to lift us out of the world, but to lead us through it as a mother fondly leads her son and as a father his daughter. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Take from us the worn clothes of adulthood and dress us up like children so that we can dream and imagine and play again without fear or contradiction. Speak to us in the silence we learn to cherish and let our conversation with you move from formality to friendliness until all of life and all of us become open to your spirit. Graciously treasure us, Lord, as a lover embraces the beloved. Reveal to us in fond intimacy all that you wish to receive 
wish us to receive from you and all you wish to receive from us. Give us a deep cherishing where we have had our fill of sh shallow pleasures. Give us affection for ourselves where we have neglected the beauty which you've planted in us. Give us love for you, especially if respect is all we usually offer. And this night, to those who are anxious, bring calm and enliven those impaired by apathy. To the sick in body, mind, and spirit, bring healing. And to their carers, bring skill and sensitivity. To the abused, bring safe affection and send an angel to forestall their abusers. To the war-torn and oppressed, bring the dawn of a different day. And to those who wield power, give the wisdom to use it wisely. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now we put into your hands which cradle creation, our souls, our bodies, our hopes, our fears, our past and our future. For you alone are God, from whom all goodness comes, and through whom all life is made new. Amen. So we hear our final hymn this evening, Sing for God's Glory. Thank you, Rachel. Well, thank you for coming this evening. Remember that uh, we have um, Friday prayers tomorrow morning at uh, quarter past seven, and then Carboard Cafe at half past ten, and then a bedtime story at half past six. 
Um, and then uh, if, um, if anybody wants to catch up on this service, then that I think will probably be up at seven o'clock uh, tomorrow evening. Then Saturday space at 12 midday on Saturday and then Sunday uh, service at half past 10 on Facebook and YouTube as normal. And on Sunday we are um, looking at the 23rd Psalm, so probably the most famous, one of the most famous passages, passages in the whole Bible. So, uh, so please join us for that uh, again if you're able to. Um, but I say, apart from that, I think those are the only intimations and notices and that kind of thing for the moment. So for this time and this place and these people, may Jesus Christ be praised. By the faithful on earth and the saints in heaven, may Jesus Christ be praised. Through this night and at every day's dawning, may Jesus Christ be praised. And so the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love, and all those you find it more difficult to love, this day and forevermore. Amen.